Okay, g'day guys. Thought I'd do a bit of a demonstration on a recirculating sluice. I have a couple of products here from Goldrat Engineering. Uh, we have the little six inch river sluice. Obviously you set it up in a river, let the water circulate through it over the mat. Uh, Goldrat makes some awesome, awesome rubber matting here. Vortex, I think it's called, Vortex matting. Um, Gold mat mini rat, um, but being a six inch, the same mat can be used in either the river sluice or a recirc sluice, recirculating sluice. This has a bulkhead with a hose connection on the end. Um, pretty much you set it up in a bucket. I utilize two buckets, I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, bilge pump, hose comes through, we set it up with the mats and reverse riffle and whatnot inside. Um, I actually coated the bottom of it with chalkboard paint. When this is run extremely slow, um, you can get the very, very fine flower gold come through here. So it's sort of multi-purpose. You can cut and put V-rib matting in here as well. Um, but this stuff is so good, you can't fault it. So once she's assembled, your V-mat will sit there. Oh, sorry, your uh, gold wrap mat will sit there. I add a little bit of V-rib matting at the front, so that will sit in that position. This will clamp. That will clamp in there, clamping down on the beam, on the on the mat, and then there's a reverse riffle that goes here, and this sort of contains the water that's flowing through the bulkhead and sort of retains it and distributes it evenly across the sluice. So I'll uh, pop this together and um, we'll go from there. I actually utilize two, actually 100 litre storage tubs. Find them down at Bain's. I set the sluice up so that it straddles both tubs. So obviously the water is going to be coming in this side, flowing out this side. I catch my tailings in a bucket with another sieve. Believe it or not, I actually catch the smaller rocks and utilize them in fish tank gravel. Um, but either way, it's, it's captured in a bucket so that it can be checked for fine stuff later. Now, what I actually do, on, you can see I'm filling up this bucket now. I utilize these PVC pipes. I have two of those that will sit over the edge. As the water level in this bucket increases, the pressure difference draws water through the PVC pipe to then refill this bucket. So I'm just starting to get up to the water level now. Um, so I do need two hands to do it. Uh, once the water level's done, you completely fill this with water, clamp it, put it over there, and then it creates a venturi effect or a suction effect to, to keep the water level in both tubs even at all times. So I'll set that up now and show you how it works. So I just set up these two PVC pipes. My hose is going into this bucket. And if we look at the water level on this side, she's rising. Okay, we're just about ready to go. I've connected up my hose to my 1200 gallon per hour bilge pump that uh, just runs off 12 volts I've got a little, it only draws three amps worth of power so I've just got a little five amp power supply that I use to run that um, I do have a flow rate just a ball valve just to regulate flow I do drop it back a little bit um, I do utilize my phone to check the angle on this I set this around about eight degrees so after doing it a few times a couple of bits of timber straddled across the two two buckets. I've got my little um, PVC U-shaped units to recirculate the water in between the two tubs. Um, I've got my sieve, I've got a capture bucket just to get the tailings. Now one thing I do like to do before I start is just grab, this is just some water down detergent. Make sure it's 
open. Just before you start, give it a little squirt and go through and just get a toothbrush and brush through. Now what happens is sometimes you get air bubbles. Um, sort of the air bubbles stick to the mat so to speak and the water just flows straight over the air bubbles. So getting a little bit of detergent in, at least at the beginning. Give everything a bit of a brush, a bit of a clean. Make sure it's all wet and soaked up. And obviously this soap, once it recirculates through the whole system, it may get a little bit bubbly, but it helps to stop any really fine gold particles from um, floating, just floating straight through. Helps them sink, lets them drop down. Half decent stuff I see here. It usually does wash through when I do get gold on the, on the V-rib. Um, but it's more of an indicator, just so that if I do put do put gold in, and it, or do put dirt in, and it's got gold in it, it tends to sit there for a little bit. Uh, it will wash through and definitely get captured by the by the um, it's actually the dream mat. It does get captured by the dream mat, but it's an indicator just to let you know that you actually have got gold in your um, in your dirt. So we'll uh, we'll get started. Okay, we've. Uh Start at the pump up. Got a nice sort of rippling effect. You can see that the water does get broken up by those bits in the water. So we're just going to throw a little bit of material through first. Just see how it gets captured. So if you look closely, you see that. The main thing is the dancing. You want to hear the dancing, or see the dancing, I should say. Um, you tend to get little rocks, the heavies will sit to the bottom of those little cells, and they'll sit there and they'll dance away. If something heavier comes in, the heavier thing will go in and knock out the lighter one, and the lighter one will move on to a different cell. So providing you can make sure that in the cells, all your little rocks are dancing away and everything's nice and happy, um, you're pretty much ready to go. So everything's looking pretty good here, it's nice and even. I did check it with a level, just to make sure it's flat. Uh, you want to make sure it is level. If it's off filter, obviously all your dirt will run to one side, so it's another thing you're checking when you're placing dirt through. Just check that it fills the mat, fills the cells evenly all the way down. And um, it washes through. So. Look, I'm pretty happy with that. I am not a professional, I'll tell you that now. Um, some people may have other opinions and other ways of doing it. Um, this is just how I do it, and my capture rate's pretty good. I often go through the end of the tailings, and I'm lucky to find one or two tiny little specks. So, um, you know, tried and true for my purposes here with the equipment I've got. Seems to work. Um, as I said, that's a heavy, it's not a piece of gold, but we will find that the lettering here will capture a lot of gold and a lot of a lot of material in here so you often find a lot of your gold gets caught even before it hits the cells that's how good this stuff is Just run 
probably one full bucket, two half buckets. As I said before, I run it through. Run it through a little sieve. So the uh, dirt I ran through the sluice was classified to 10 mil. Is that half inch? Yep, and then this is quarter inch or five mil. So that catches that size. So I as I mentioned, I keep that stuff and uh, clean it up for fish tank gravel. And we're left with beautiful stuff here. If you want to later, if there is some finer flower gold in there, as I said before, I can take the um, take the dream mat out, change the angle a little bit so it's a bit less of an angle, run it very, very slowly, and just run it through the um, chalk paint on the bottom, which captures some very, very fine gold. But for the moment, I'll just grab grab old blue. So I'll just undo these nuts from the bottom. So there is a few little bits in there. Caught there. And as I said, a lot of gold does get captured in the um, in the writing. So just give me two seconds to undo these uh, these nuts. We'll get back into it. Let's start breaking this down. Show you why I'm doing this in a second. I like to uh, put the bolts back in. And just slide out the mats. So with these, tip it backwards, tap the water, give it a bit of a bit of a roll. Bending the mat tends to release everything out of it. Give it a check. Sure, there's nothing left. Yeah. three to four heaped tablespoons full of concentrates. So that's some good stuff. Pan it out very, very slowly. Okay. Back with the pan in the tub to catch everything. Trusty old bathtub. I think I was bathing in this when I was a kid quite a while ago. I'm just going to do this roughly for the video. I'll go back and make sure I get everything else out of it later. Just want to be very gentle. Just get the big stuff off. It's already concentrated, so don't want to go too crazy. See some gold on the bottom. Always pull it back as soon as you see gold. I'll 
just do it rough. Just for you guys. Not sure. What you can see there. <laughs> little picker very nice little picker come out of there that was hidden I had no idea it was in the mat but a um, couple of bits of lead and look at that that is Okay, we've, uh, we've got it all dried out, not a terrible amount, not a huge amount, but you know, for a random hole in a creek and two half buckets of dirt, I can't complain, especially with that nice little picker, very, very happy with that one, so let's, I guess it's time to uh, weigh it up, hey? Might recognize that it's a uh, Chinese uh, chopstick holder. Chop the end off, works quite well. Okay, so we zero. We might take a little picker out first, put that aside. As I said, it's not a huge amount, just a little bit. Makes it half worthwhile for actually finding. Okay, I'm gonna say this, yeah, point, it's more than point one, be out at the point two. Let's go point one five. Oh, look at that, near enough. So point three, you know, so point three. Look, it's not much, but none of that was much either. Every little bit counts and adds up. So the beauty of this little scoop is just give it a tap. And she's full. Added to the collection. Happy days.